so you were talking about the development of the fasting mimicking diet and how you um, you were looking at all these genetic pathways and also you mentioned the ketone bodies and um, and what was the last thing for uh, ketone bodies and glucose and glucose IGF right. one well, and IGF IGF. one glucose and ketone and these are all these are all things that regulate um, cancer growth as well yes they 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 can regulate cancer they do regulate many cancers and uh, in different ways I mean ketone bodies um, you know, some will argue that hurt cancer cells, and um, uh, but some cancers actually love to use both ketone bodies and sugar. Yeah. Yeah. There was so, a recent publication, I think. Yeah. Um, so you can actually accelerate cancer growth with ketone bodies, but you can also hurt cancer cells with ketone bodies. You know, this is why ketogenic diet. Um, you know, I wouldn't get too, um, you know, confident about using ketogenic diet alone against uh, cancer cells because, of course, um, even fasting, uh, a lot of cancer cells can adapt uh, to, the, to the change environment. So, um, Yeah, cancer the, is a very, it's so, it's, it's so complicated when it comes to cancer and you, it seems like really, you really have to be careful when you're trying to treat the cancer. Um, yeah, I, and, and, um, and I think that uh, there is a lot of, of course, interest on, on the ketogenic diets and, and cancer treatment, and it's good. I think it, it can do, uh, there are situations where the ketogenic diet can, can hurt the cancer growth. Um, but, uh, you know, as for fasting, we see that um, you need to have, uh, in most cases, the the powerful target intervention with the fasting. Mm -hmm. So like fasting and chemo, mm -hmm. fasting and kinase inhibitors, um, you know, fasting and uh, um, immunotherapy, for example. So uh, I will assume that the ketogenic diet alone um, is going to be a, uh, a complementary uh, intervention. Uh, so now, for example, we're very interested in what happens if you do fasting, ketogenic diet, and cancer treatment mm. together. You know? Yeah. That, that I think is very promising, particularly if you do it in, in the sense of, uh, and, and we have had you know, patients that with very um, aggressive uh, phenotypes that are doing this. So they, they do the periodic fasting making diet, then in between the ketogenic diet, and then they keep doing the radiotherapy, and particularly like gliomas, radiotherapies and chemotherapy. Um, and it seems to be you know, uh, working are certainly very promising. Wow. Is this an ongoing trial you're talking about, um, or is it just? We haven't started, I mean, we, we have trials on cancer, a number of trials on cancer. We don't have one on glioma yet, but uh, I know that uh, some groups in uh, Arizona, they are, but they mostly have just done it with the ketogenic diet. Uh, but, but uh, you know, because it's so aggressive, um, and most people, you cannot tell a glioma patient or wait until the clinical trial is, uh, is ready, right, because it's, it's, it's a very quick moving uh, cancer. So in some cases we just say, look, talk, go to your oncologist and ask them if they're okay by letting you follow a, a, a fasting uh, plus ketogenic diet plus standard of care. So they're just adding ketogenic diet and, and fasting to the standard of care. Yeah, okay. And that's, um, uh, so the, for the periodic fasting, is that also including the fasting mimicking diet, which they can Talk yeah, so, so the, the, yeah, the fasting making, I mean, not, not water only fasting, but we FMD, ketogenic diet, and standard of care. And um, yeah, so. So I do remember that at least with, um, there's been a couple of studies that you were uh, involved on with water fasting, you showed in, in a combination with standard of care treatment, it, um, it seemed to uh, be safe and also um, to some degree seem to uh, sensitize some of the cancer cells to death and also maybe even protect some of the normal cells and some of these um, blood cells. They weren't, get, they weren't getting uh, neutropenia or the, the sil um, myelotoxicity quite as you know, significant as people that didn't do the fast. Um, yeah. Do you have any, now I know you've published studies on the fasting mimicking diet in animals and cancer in combination with uh, standard of care. Is there any, uh, clinical trials that you're planning on doing with fasting mimicking diet uh, in humans? Yeah, no, we're doing it, right? So um, they're going a little bit slower than, um, than uh, um, predicted, uh, in part because uh, we didn't see coming the uh, food aversion. So uh, patients, uh, when you give them any food with something that is toxic, 
uh, then develop a food aversion. So anything that you give them with the toxicity is now recognized as uh, mm -hmm. toxic um, also. And um, so now we're having to you know, develop a number of, of new foods specifically to avoid the repetition. You cannot repeat anything twice, essentially. For, so if somebody has eight cycles of chemotherapy, you know, you, we may have to give them eight different things, all respecting the, the, the formulation requirements. So, so yeah, that, that surprises us a little bit. So but we already, a um, uh, couple hundred patients have already been enrolled uh, in these uh, multiple randomized uh, clinical trials. And the good news is that there is no problems. We have seen any problems with the, the fasting making diet and cancer treatment, uh, but it's been slower than uh, than expected because of these. Uh, um, you know, a because of course you cannot promise. You cannot go to a patient and say, "Oh, this is going to make you feel better." Yeah. And, and if you give them a pill, it's much easier because there is no effort on the part of the patient. With the fasting making diet. Um, you know, if you knew it was going to be much better for you and somebody told you, I don't think it would be a problem because we see it with the, with the you know, healthy subject. But if you don't know, you have cancer, and then you have this food aversion <laughs> altogether, it makes it very tough uh, for people. So we had about a 40% thus far compliance. And uh, so now we need to tweak it so we get to maybe 70%. Yeah. yeah, that sounds like a, a challenge. But if uh, there are oncologists right now that... Uh, are interested in using the fasting mimicking diet in combination with their standard of care treatment, that is something that they can do, um, correct? Well, um, yeah, the, I, the way we've been uh, putting it is that they can, uh, if the patient cannot wait for the end of the clinical trials and the oncologist agrees, you know, for whatever reason that they cannot wait, um, then they can certainly uh, do it with the standard of care. So they do the standard of care and then the fasting making diet along with, um, with that. Um, now, the FDA uh, prohibits any uh, product uh, or any claim related to uh, disease prevention or, or treatment for something that has not been FDA approved. Uh, so then, you know, uh, I think an oncologist should be very careful in, in presenting it to the patient. So it has to be presented as something experimental uh, that could be good for them or could be bad for them. Um, and um, yeah, so uh, that said, you know, of course, in mice, we have incredible results. We and many labs now have repeated this. So it works very, very well. And, um, and uh, so... You know, if somebody cannot wait, I think um, then uh, it's fair to go to the oncologist and say, obviously, I'm running out of options. Um, shall we consider this one? Yeah. What does it take to, for how many like clinical trials does it take for FDA to approve something? Is it? No, the, uh, the FDA is a specific process. So you have to enter, you have to file uh, an IND application. And there is, it's a very okay. expensive, a long process. It's not just trial. I got it. Okay. Uh, so it's, uh, you know, it's three phases, phase one, two, three. And, um, and in the end, you probably have between 500 and 1,000 people, 1,000 patients. Um, and then they, made the, they make a decision based on the data, uh, whether it's approved or not. The whole process usually costs about $50 million. And uh, wow. so, you know, this, this is what makes it complicated, right? Yeah. Because, uh, um, yeah, it's, it's not easy to uh, justify this kind of investment yeah. uh, on a diet, you know. Yeah.